Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333 with Natalie is it done? The last match for the night is going to be Feldas and Gulda. I realize you got my introduction out of order. Anyway, Feldas versus Gulda on Finn's Revenge, which is not a map I have seen much recently. It's not the most popular map. I'm actually a little bit surprised that they're playing on it, but I'm curious to see how they do it. And it looks like it's going to be a hovercraft mirror. So this is actually on the latest version. I mentioned in the last match that there were some tank buffs. Basically, Panther got his health improved, and Kodachi, I think, got a cost buff, I think? I have to double-check. But, anyway, you can look up on the website, on 0k.info. It's pretty sizable. Sorry, Kodachi got a line of sight increase. Panther got a health increase. Anyway, Golda going for heavy economy, and Finn's Revenge is the map where you want to start off really economical, if possible. Failthouse, however, going for a raiding. Bit surprising. They do still have the quill early on, but yeah, going for early raiding, they are... Because, yeah, Finn's Revenge, because you start out rather distant from each other, you can get away with a lot of expansion early on. And also, because each metal extract is worth three metal, that's another good reason to expand as early and as quickly as possible. Failthouse, just double-checking to see if nothing... I guess they want to see if any quills are going over to... The, or possibly any conches, if they're going for Amphib are going over to the island over the northwest, because these islands are very lucrative. I mean, eight metal each, and they're fairly defensible as well. Neither player going for them quite yet. Focusing on the main base first. And Felthos with the early scout, with the early harassment. Both players now aware they are playing a mirror match. But neither player had really set up a strategy yet. It's not like Hovercraft Mirror is that different from other matchups, really. I mean, I guess maces are more useful in Hovercraft Mirror than they are in a lot of other matchups. But I don't think we're going to see a huge difference. I mean, what what would you expect? Hovercraft or Hover Amphib? That's basically what's going to happen on this map. So, Felthos with a bit of damage. Not bad. Gorda... Where's their energy? Oh, their energy's all reclaim. That's the entirety of their energy budget has been reclaiming trees. Felthos, on the other hand, building a ton of power plants. So they're actually a little bit slower to set up their energy economy, but still fairly quick to set up their economy overall. The harassment helped a little bit. Double checking the north, the northwest island. Looks like also southeast. Feldos being very careful to make sure they don't lose those islands, or at least are fully aware when Gulda takes them. And in comes the mace. I don't think this will be up in time. That factory needs to take priority, or Feldos needs to stop building things. Because that's the only way the mace is going to be up in time. Relying on the lotuses, because that's all they have. That mace... Like, th this battle will be over by the time the mace is built. And I think that we're probably going to see scalpels pretty quick. And that's one thing that Hovercraft has been using a lot in non-hover mirror matchups. Has been scalpels. Because scalpels have been very powerful. In hover mirror, I would think that the daggers would be a little bit quick to deal with, with scalpels. Maces, however, would basically mean go for scalpels. And that mace... There we go, should be up by now. There we go. So at this point, Golda can't really do a huge amount of harassment. I mean, they did take out one metal extractor, so they've basically gotten even. But once again, like last game, they were accessing. Accessing due to lack of energy, too. I mean, they didn't build any power plants, so it's a bit risky. Going for that geo plant, they need to re yeah, they're trying to reclaim desperately into energy to avoid excess. But yeah, that's all they have for energy production. And this northwest side. Okay, well, it's being telegraphed. Like, Gorda's going to figure out the northwest side is being taken. The southeast side is not being taken. Gorda checking that as well, because that's prudent. But the fact that the northwest side does have lotuses, that does telegraph that the northwest side is being taken. Yeah, Gorda now has complete knowledge of where Feltos is planning to expand. And they know Feltos is planning to expand over to the northwest, not over to the southeast. And they've also realized, they also lost sight. Like, they have no idea. Like that is, I should say, Failthos has no idea whether or not Gulda is going to be expanding to the southeast, or if they were just clearing the area to make sure that Failthos wouldn't. Not yet clear, and there are the scalpels. Three of them so far, but yeah, that's that's the scalpels. That's what I was figuring would happen. Mass scalpel, that's what Hovercraft does. And this game is no exception. Though Failthos continuing to go for the maces, not really considering the possibility of scalpels, apparently. If they were, they'd probably go for either Halberds or... Actually, a combination of Halberd and Dagger. And they themselves are also going for Scalpel, just in case. With the Air Switch coming in, I could see... Uh, well, I suppose I could see Flails, but I don't know. You kind of want those Scalpels. 
But I could definitely see the use of flails. However, at this point, where is that mace? One mace over here. Yeah, see, so mace, dagger, scalpel. Oh, I didn't want that. That goes in view. Yeah, Felthos does not have a particularly large army at the moment. Okay, they have a mace over to the northwest. They have a mace in their main base. And once again, a little bit more scouting. Because why not? And actually, there's no reason why not, because scouting is always a good idea. Okay, it's generally always a good idea. I recommend it, just to know what your opponent's up to. At this point, Felthos looks like they're trying to go for the same angle as last time, which is a good angle. There's no defenses there. But what is well, well aware there's something incoming? Like, they they know. The radar is down. That's handy. But yeah, now they know. And now Gorda has given away the fact that they have air. So that scouting was totally worth it. I may have lost that particular dagger, but they gained the knowledge of air. So they know that there's air coming. Going for tridents. Setting up a gunship plant, using that for tridents, most likely. They're probably not going to go for mass flail, because while flails are a very powerful anti-air unit, I don't think they're going to want to go for that on the ground. They're probably going to want to go for tridents so that it's a bit harder for the scalpels to deal with. And Gulda definitely expanded the southeast. I mean, if that weren't clear from the fact that they cleared it out. But at this point, Feltus does not seem particularly concerned. They are not acting on it. They're trying to build the main base. They're trying to set up a, f a solid position to build from. They have stuff to fall back to if necessary. While Gold, on the other hand, trying to rip them open with Ravens. Because you do not see... You haven't seen Ravens in a while. They've fell out of popularity and... They got... Buffed a little bit. Like, their speed when diving is not as slow as it used to be. I think they're still in a pretty good spot. But I also just haven't seen Ravens a lot recently. I've just mostly seen gunships or occasionally Phoenixes. I guess it's a good spot when it's like you're using them for the specific purpose of destroying particular buildings. That's what they were designed for. You know, going around, tearing apart metal extractors, tearing apart the occasional heavy strategic target. Generally a good idea. Now, Felthos... I mean, if Gota didn't know before Felthos in the Northwest, they know now. Yeah, Felthos... They can rebuild. Kind of need to rebuild. Gotta be careful about this, though. The Northwest is in a tricky spot. Good... I mean, the Hacksaws are up. Good call on the Razor, too, because that's going to be a very obvious point of attack. I mean, the Ravens are just going to want to go for that. Although, maybe not. Golda probably realizes there's a lot of defenses there. They're probably going to go on ground. They'd be wise to do so. I mean, they did see there was the Hacksaw there to begin with. So they know there's a Hacksaw there. They know that there's defenses they have to deal with. They probably don't want to deal with. Except they have a Wolverine, in which case they definitely want to deal with it. And these Tridents are not in position. That Wolverine will get a nice free shot off, getting rid of the Hacksaw. And then, although the Razor up, the Razor will be a problem, but still... Getting rid of that Hacksaw, taking a bit of damage. The Tridents... Okay, good. Feldos moving them into position. It's like, those Tridents have to... No, no, they're not in position. They're out of position. They're going to block any further attempts to attack. But that's it. That's all they can do. And at this point, Feldos has them so spread out. Like, they're attacking... They're blocking from here, and they're blocking from here. But they're spread out along a line that makes it... So it's kind of hard for them to really block anything, effectively. Okay, so Golden wants to go for the Grounded Anti-Air. I mean, Golden can go for the Grounded Anti-Air because they have a very strong scalpel position. It's that Felthos can't really go for the grounded anti-air easily because of their lack of scalpels. They don't have that strong of scalpel position, so they need to just take the skies. That's all they can really do. Like, if they were to cede to the scalpels, they have a scalpel gap, and then they'd lose. They don't want to lose the scalpel gap. So instead, you go for the tridents. But Golden can totally get away with it, or at least could totally get away with it, but now it might actually be biting them... I mean, neither player can really afford a scalpel gap, and clearly this is why. Gold's commander's down as well, and that's... That's that for Gold's commander, but... I wouldn't be so concerned given the fact that their economies are fairly high, but... Feldas is considerably higher, and Gold is still accessing. Which is surprising, actually. Oh, I see, they're just barely. Just barely accessing. But yeah, it, this is... Like, Feldas is actually holding out pretty well. I think at this point we're going to see... Yeah, okay, halberds. Because the either scalpels or halberds, because that would be either dir the direct counter or just get more scalpels. Rectify the scalpel gap. You don't want that. And now, okay, so Feltos looks like they're going to take out that southeast side of the map, which is totally undefended, in fact. Should point that out. This is undefended. 
Like, it looks like Goldo's expecting an on-sea attack force. Oh, almost totally undefended. Never mind. They get spotted out. Goldo's radar coverage is really good right now. When you see their radar coverage right now, they have basically their entire half of the map. Felthoth, on the other hand, does not have the southeast at all. There's a... looks like a big gap in the middle of the north... the middle of the sea. On the north side, that's actually becoming a bit of a problem. Oh, never mind. It's not a gap. It's that they only have this one band they can see, but they can't see onto land. So this entire area is closed off to them. That's not a good position. Now, what I'm a little surprised by is that one of the things this patch added was to give vultures, the scout planes for the airplane factory, give them in radar jammer. But I don't see any vultures. I'm a little surprised. I think Golda didn't quite think about that or forgot about that. Because that is a very powerful tool. I'm rather surprised they didn't come up. Not totally surprised. I mean, it's a new change. I don't think Golda really thinks it's that big of a deal to have the radar jamming. But it would probably have helped. Granted, Feldas is not exactly in the winningest of positions. At this point, the islands... Looks like they... Are they going to trade? I don't know if they're going to trade. That mace... Yeah, they're going to trade. They're totally going to trade. The ground force will finish it off. However, Gorda's forces are out of position right now, so Felthas could go for an attack. I mean, Felthas took out the southeast. They could just take the southeast right now. But they don't have enough maces. The scalpels might help against the daggers. And the rapiers will definitely help against the daggers. Which, they are exactly doing that. Because that's what they should do. Deal with those daggers. Make sure they're not a problem anymore. Because they get rid of those daggers, that will, like, these are, this is most of Golda's force, actually. I think, Golda, yeah, Golda's the only one with daggers right now. Half of their daggers are up right there. Like, this is half of their dagger force being heavily threatened. If it weren't for the flails, they would have been dead. The only problem, of course, is that Hovercraft doesn't have that great of a riot unit. The maces are okay. They're decent at dealing with daggers, but they don't, they don't deal with groups very well. They just hit individual units hard and... The units can't run away. They, they're riot by the fact that they basically nullify the raider speed advantage rather than by destroying a bunch of units at once and nullifying the raider numbers advantage. Looks like the halberds are doing fine though. At this point, Felthaw's pretty much going in for the kill. We've got the southeast. Looks like they're gonna. Yeah, they have the northwest. Not quite retakeable, but they have the air defense still there. So it's still going to be hard to avoid... Or it's going to be hard for Golda to prevent Felthas taking that. Especially given the economic advantage. Felthas basically has this game. Pretty much in the bag. And with the Halberds taking the Wyvern bombs... Not the Wyverns. The Leak... No, it's Wyverns. I was right the first time. Taking the Wyvern bombs like that. That's also problematic. Although, are they going to go down? Yeah, the, the Halberds are going down. That's not what they want, I'm sure. Halberds against Scalpels. Maces against Daggers. Although... Halberds aren't bad against daggers, but still, that's a lot of damage being taken there. You don't want that. You really don't want that. How many flails are in play right now? Five. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a sizable number. You do not want to... Put the, I was about to say, maybe the rapiers could go in to help out, but are there too many flails? And the answer is yes, there are indeed way too many flails. Do not do that. Doing that is death. I don't know, it looks like Gulda is going to take the northwest side of the map. Veldas took the southeast, so I guess they just traded. Or maybe not. Yeah, the best thing to do right now would actually be just to reclaim the island. How much reclaim is here anyway? A thousand metal reclaim! Yeah! Yeah, that's what you want to do. Reclaim that island. So it looks like that's not even going to happen. Gould is going to be the one able to do so. That defender's not going to do much. That island is... That island is Gould's. Totally Gould's. Oh, the Halberd's coming in at the last second. Like, you can try. Valiant effort. Really. Yeah, we're sorry. We didn't mean to do. We didn't mean to kill you like that. But well, that's what we do. But at the same time, Felthos just ripping this apart. Where's the reclaim over here, though? Neither like, Gold is reclaiming a little bit. Felthos doesn't have anything up front reclaiming. I don't see any quills coming. There are quite a lot of quills built early on too, from both sides. But neither player, particularly Gold, is this is their territory. Neither player is really focusing much on reclaim. And there's three thousand metal worth of reclaim here. Granted, part of that's a commander, but still. 3,000 metal worth of reclaim is not something to be taken lightly. That is a massive amount of economy. That's like two minutes worth of... Well, okay, for fail toss, it's about a minute's worth of economy. For... For Gorda, it's closer to about two minutes worth of economy or so. 
basically Golda could double their economy for two minutes. Very easily. Okay, so the northwest remains contested. The southeast is basically Feltos's. I mean, the thing is, Gold is just wearing down Feltos's forces because Golda has the economic advantage and has not accessed really at all. They're in a very comfortable position. Like, every unit that Golda loses is a huge deal. Every unit that Feltos loses, it's relatively replaceable. So at this point, the only thing they could really win for Golda would be... Hmm. I don't even know. Like, honestly, offhand, like, type counters, sure, that like, using halberds and such to deal with the scalpels. But at this point, I mean, it's kind of hard to set that up. The, the Wyvern's doing a pretty good job tearing apart what it can. It's just, you know, the lack of numbers is becoming a problem. Especially given the lack of economy. The flails are helping out a little bit, but flails are not anti air forces. Or, sorry, flails are not anti ground forces, they're anti air forces. And while they are trying to help get rid of these gunships, which is definitely useful, that's been a massive part of Feldas' force up to this point, they really haven't mattered... Like, the gunships haven't mattered for this area. They haven't made a difference. The gunships were never really used in these fights. Yeah, Feldas right now, they're just... They're in a really cozy spot. While Gulda continuing to lose economy, I think... I'm surprised Gulda is still hold, hanging on right now. Like, there's going to be one more fight. These scalpels will die, and then Gulda will probably throw in the towel. I'm guessing. Yeah, the northwest is very solidly Felthoss's. This the southeast is Felthoss's. Yeah, two hundred percent equal lead. He has a trip he has a three times equal lead. Yeah, like Felthoss is massively ahead right now. As Kroon is pointing out. Like, what did they, they weren't able to hold well it's the southeast they had, they weren't able to hold. But they didn't have the equal lead at all this game. They really didn't. I mean, they got the scalpels early on. They did a bit of damage, but they didn't manage to do that much with it. Whereas, Feldos, ah, like, they just got the halbers. They just got what they needed to deal with scalpels. They got their own scalpels, too, because why not? Scalpels are powerful. You want to have them. And that basically sealed the game. Feldos took it. The thing that Gulda at this point... I'm a bit surprised they aren't surrendering. I think Gulda at this point basically has no chance. They've kind of... They're so behind economically that they can't, and militarily as well, they can't easily get a force that's going to just type counter out. Right, that's the thing with the Hovercraft Mirror, it's type counters aren't great, because daggers rely so much on alpha, so they rely a lot on numbers. And halberds rely a lot on having a few of them to tank shots, which means they kind of rely on numbers. And scalpels deal with numbers really well. But then that's what halberds are for, is to tank the shots. But they don't have a... But Hovercraft, other than maybe Scalpels, which don't deal with Halberds very well, don't have an easy way of dealing with numbers. But they also need to get numbers, so the, ho the Hovercraft Mirror matchup tends... It kind of comes down more to just having units and having money. It's not like you can just build, say, a Warrior or a Leveler or something and turn it around. So at this point, Feldos, I mean, despite Gulda now getting a bunch of Reclaim to work with, probably going to... I mean, even that reclaim's not evening out the economy. It's not even close. Gulda is probably going to try one more time with the daggers. See if they can't get in close to the scalpels and deal with them, or get close to the halberds and deal with them. Because they don't do badly against halberds, but with enough of them. It's just the with enough of them part. That's the problem. That's the hard part. It's getting enough of them for it to matter. This this will burn, though. That's been the unit of the match. Like, that has been tearing apart. Pretty much that's the one thing that's been pushing back Feltos's forces. Despite Feltos' massive lead, has been that Wyvern. But looks like this is ultimately going to be it. Yep, that's game, so. That is it, and that Wyvern. doesn't even die. I'm kind of curious to talk about pathing. I mean, I realize the Hypercrafts are a little bit wonky with pathing, but. I don't know what else you do. Like, what other pathing solutions are there? Like, is there something that can be done with hovercrafts? Is that a vehicle problem because they have the turn radius? Because they realize the hovercraft have a fairly long turn radius and don't strafe, even though you kind of expect them to. Well, anyway, that was that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Although, admittedly, a little both games with Golda were surprisingly one-sided. I am really surprised. That is not something that we see from Golda very much. 
I mean, okay, in Fatal Task Gold, the last game was a bit of a... It gradually became Fatal Task's game, but the game with Drone, Drone's had a command and lead the entire time. Oh, sorry, Aronilus. Sorry, Aronilus, I'm testing a new overlay that's kind of work in progress. There is actually still the old overlay, the Deluxe Player List. I'm not sure which one I'd rather use for the moment. So yeah, the Deluxe Player List still has the army value. I may use the Deluxe Player List for the moment. I just was wanting to test this out to get a good idea of how it worked, just to see if there's anything that could be added to it, other than, you know, wins being updated on the fly. Like they really should be updated when they get changed. Other than that, yeah, the army value thing is going to come as part of this eventually. And that is planned for this thing. So I may just use the Deluxe Player List in the future. I do like this, though, especially for team matches. Kind of nice to just have team versus team, especially since communism is a thing. Like, all the all the metal and energy is shared with the team. So while the army values are different, and that is something to bear in mind, the metal values are not different. The metal values are entirely the same. Oops. And energy as well. So that, I think, is a little bit cleaner than Deluxe Player List. The Deluxe Player List gets really messy when you have teams. So yeah, there will be, ultimately, in this new spectator panels, there will be something for army values, and actually a bunch of other panels are planned. I'm It's Google Frog working on this. I'm not, I haven't really had much time to work on anything. But yeah, Google Frog's the one working on this, and they've been doing a pretty good job so far. I quite like the design of it. I mean, it, this is also customizable. You can move these things around. I personally like the way I have it set up, but yeah, it's pretty nicely set up. And ultimately, it'll be a bunch of these mini panels that you can pull out for different things. It kind of, it's kind of being stopped a little bit after the StarCraft 2 Observer setup, except with the ability to have multiple panels up at once, rather than just having switching between economy and, and production and upgrades and APM or whatever else you have. It's... You could have all those at once, although admittedly not all of them are relevant for 0k, but you know what I mean. Anyway, that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that once again, and thank you for watching. Have a good night, everyone. Probably have Clan Wars on Saturday. Not sure. And also not sure if I'm going to be doing... I really should probably pull out the Friday off of the advertising thing. Friday is MBM PST because I haven't done Friday cast in a while. So I might pull that off. I might do something this Friday. I kind of doubt it. It's one of those things where I might do from time to time. But I think Wednesday and Saturday are the only days I can really guarantee. And since I don't have enough viewers at the moment, like you need several hundred viewers concurrently, and there aren't even several hundred players of 0k, in order to have the partnership, I don't see the point of forcing myself to try to do it three times a week and not actually do it three times a week. So anyway, once again, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone. And I hope you didn't mind my shop talk just then.